So in this situation, we have Amanda. She's a civil engineer. Uh, she needs a vehicle for work on average 12 days a month. Uh, obviously, she would live in a larger city that has a robust public transport system, whether that's buses, cabs, subways, etc. So she only rents the vehicle when she needs it. The advantage to renting a vehicle, she just fills up the gas tank, drops it off when she's done. The disadvantage is she has to get from her place to the rental company, pick up the vehicle. When she drops it off, she also has to get back home. Uh, so she's thinking about maybe buying a vehicle, maybe leasing a vehicle. Uh, we need to look at what is the best option for her. Sometimes that comes down to money. Uh, so she could lease a vehicle, which requires a down payment of $4,000, which means same thing as a mortgage. Uh, she would have to have $4,000 to hand over to the car company. Her lease payments means she would also be paying $380 per month. Uh, because she is leasing the vehicle, she needs insurance, so she needs plates, which are twelve twenty each year. Uh, and as usual, we, we can pay those monthly. And she would have to pay for repairs, maintenance, such as oil changes, tire rotations, tune-ups, etc., which she figures would average out to $50 each month. Not saying that every month would be $50, but on average it would be. The downside to leasing is she would have no equity at the end of the lease, meaning she would not own any part of this vehicle. She would have to give it back to the company exactly as is. She could choose to buy the vehicle, 32800 finance it for a four-year term at 4.5% compounded monthly. She would still have to pay for the plates, the repair, the maintenance, just as she would with leasing. However, at the end of this four years, she would own the vehicle outright and she would have equity in it, uh, which would be an asset for her. So at the end of this four years, if this vehicle is worth $11,000, she could turn around and sell it and get $11,000 in her pocket. With the lease, she couldn't. Or she could keep doing what she's doing. She could rent at $49.99 per day uh, with unlimited kilometers. Uh, this is a clause put into some car rentals, but not others. Uh, some car rental companies give you a limit of so many kilometers per day. Often it's 100. Others let you drive as much as you want. So looking at the math behind this, uh, we're going to talk about the rental first. It's the easiest one to figure out. Uh, we need a common frame of reference, so let's look at monthly cost. Uh, so in one month, she would rent this car on average 12 days. So her cost to rent this car would be $49.99 times 12, which would be $599.88 per month. Just going to clear off the page so we can talk about the lease. So with the lease, she would make a $380 per month payment to the car company. Plus, she would also need to make $50 per month for maintenance. She would also need to pay for her plates every month, uh, which to figure out the cost of the plates, 1220 per year divided by 12, which would be $101.67 a month. Notice that I didn't talk about fuel cost with the rental. She would still have to pay for fuel whether she rents, leases, or buys, so this doesn't need to come into the conversation. Uh, adding this all up, if she leases, 
she would be paying 531.67 per month. On top of this $4,000 down payment. Just going to flip back to the rent. So if she rents it, she's looking at about $600 per month. If she leases it, about $530 per month. So it is a monthly savings for her. Uh, but the downside to the lease is she does have to have $4,000 in her account right now. Clear off the page one more time. We'll talk about buying this car. Uh, we'll use the TVM solver to figure out her monthly payments. Uh, she can buy it for $32,800. That would be her present value. She would finance for four years uh, and she would be paying monthly payments. So her N total number of payments would be 48 payments. We have 4.5% interest. Her payment amount, we don't know. That's what we're going to try to figure out. Her final value will be zero. She'll pay this off. Payments per year, since she's paying monthly, it'll be 12. Compounds per year, since it's compounded monthly, will also be 12. We will flip over to the graphing calculator. Input our data, apps, finance, TVM solver, 48 for N, 4.5, 32,800. Quit out of this second mode. Go back into the apps with finance. We are looking for the payment amount, so TVM PNT. Calculate that out. And her monthly payment on this car would be $747.95. We also have to take into account the insurance, so her plates, which we worked out with the lease was 101.67. We also need the repair and maintenance, which we worked out to $50. Adding that all together would give her a monthly cost of eight ninety nine sixty two in total. So as we can see, buying the car is by far the most expensive, almost nine hundred dollars a month. The lease five hundred and thirty and the rent until about 600. If we're going based on just cost, the monthly cost of the lease is the cheapest. However, the downside to it is the $4,000 that she would have to have as a down payment. Second cheapest would be to rent. Uh, it also has some inconveniences with it, having to go pick up the car and get back home after dropping it off. Buying is, again, the most expensive by $300 a month. The advantage to buying is that it is her car at the end. She gets to do with it what she wants. She can keep it if it's still good. 
not have to worry about the $750 payment on it. She would still have to worry about the plates and the maintenance, uh, but she won't have to go every day and get a new car from the rental place. She won't have to go in four years once her lease is up to get a new car as well, uh, because after this lease is over, she'll have to go back to the dealership, work out a lease on another new vehicle, have to have a similar down payment, maybe not 4000 but it would be a similar size down payment then as well. Um, but if we're going based just on money, the monthly payment of the lease is the cheapest. The monthly amount on the rental car is next. And buying is the most expensive. I am not going to say which option to recommend uh, because that will be different for each one of you. Some of you will say, well, just lease it. It's the cheapest. I have $4,000 sitting around, and that's fine. Some will say, well, I don't have $4,000 sitting around, but I can't afford it $8.99 a month, so I'm just going to rent it as I need it. And some of you will say, I don't care that it's $8.99 a month to buy. If I buy it at the end, I can do with this car as I want, and I can sell it myself later or keep driving it. So that judgment call is yours and yours alone. Uh, but we are going to look at using the math and using the numbers to make that judgment.